I can heat up the oil slightly, so I've just got a scrap piece of bar here. We'll get that hot and we'll dunk it in the oil just to lower the viscosity a little bit. I won't bore you with the heat treat details, but the lower the viscosity of the oil, uh, the faster it will quench. So actually warming your oil up will make the steel cool down faster. Stir it around a little bit, just warm the oil up, try not to set myself on fire. So we'll start heating the knife up now. It's better to heat it up very slowly. This ATCRV2, it does benefit from a soak in the heat. So I put it in, I'll stand it up against the side of the forge. Close the lid and turn the jets right down, just so it's just maintaining the temperature rather than heating the steel up too quickly. And I'll leave that in there to soak for three or four minutes at least, just so it's a nice consistent color the whole way through. Just so it stands up vertically, where it's, um, the, forge, the bottom of the forge isn't flat, where the steel is so thin, if you lay it, in the, you lay it down, the actual weight of itself will just cause it to bow in the middle. Just to illustrate how if you lay it flat in the forge where it's not perfectly flat, its own weight can warp it dramatically because it will just sink in the middle so quickly. Use a scrap knife. I had a tantrum with this one and threw it across the workshop last week, so that's already started. You can see there, it's already sunk just from its own weight. As soon as it heats up to the point it's slightly malleable, it will literally just sink into the forge because it's so thin. That's why it's so important to stand your knives up because if I went to take this out now and put it in the quench, it's completely bent just by its own weight of being in the forge for less than a minute. So obviously if you went to quench that, it's just going to come out looking like a banana, which would be a perfect knife for, I don't know, maybe peeling a pineapple or something like that. But for anything else, it's completely useless. Right, in the time I've been fucking around, the knife is ready to quench. So it's had a nice soak in here for several minutes. It's a nice even temperature the whole way across. Just take it out very carefully, keeping it straight, vertical and into the oil. Agitating up and down, not side to side, because otherwise it will end up looking like a banana as well. Take it out and check if it's straight. This has got a slight warp in it, but while it's still in this tempering range, you can take a soft-sided hammer and just tap it a little bit across the anvil. Just bring it straight. A lot of people are very afraid to do this, but it's generally pretty safe until it gets too cold. Right, that started to cool down now, so I won't hit it anymore, but it's nice and straight. It's got a very slight warp in the center. We'll take that out whilst we're tempering it. You can see this from the color on the surface, and some of it's left on there, but we don't need to worry about that. So now we'll clean this off. We'll clamp it between two pieces of steel, and we'll put it into temper. Just gonna clean it off mainly so it doesn't stink when it's in the oven tempering and also so it doesn't stick to the steel we're gonna clamp it to. Just to make it nice and straight, we'll stand it in here spine first. It's only a very minor warp, so I don't need to put any shims or anything in there. I'll just clamp it. You don't need a huge amount of pressure on this. A lot of people tighten these very, very tight and there's no real need. You just need to, just enough to pull the blade straight and in line with itself. Just like that, just nice and reasonably tight, but not too tight. And it will just pull the blade in line for when we temper it. And it should, with a bit of luck, come out completely arrow straight and ready to grind. Go to the belt. I'm just gonna bring the edge to center, cutting at a like 45 degree angle to bring the edge right to the middle before I start doing the bevels. I always found that just stops the abrasive from being destroyed by the sharp corner on the knife. Now I've pulled the, uh, the edge nice to the center and taken the sharp corners off. I switched to a new 36 grip belt. Yeah, so I had a spinal um, <coughs> curvature before. I had a, I think it was a kyphosis where it would arch slightly forwards. What was it thoracic? I had a thoracic kyphosis and an idiopathic scoliosis. So the bottom of my back was curved in that direction and the top of my back was curved in that direction. And uh, after taking an injury, it just made it 10 times worse, really exacerbated it to the point they had to break my whole spine and screw it back together. Everything is painful to a certain extent, it's just unlimiting it. Will has been very helpful, very, very helpful with my back, teaching me new ways 
to get around things with moving material. So with forging, I genuinely didn't think I'd ever be able to forge properly because I'd have to hunch over and be lifting a heavy hammer and everything like that. And he, he taught me that you really don't need a heavy hammer, you don't need an aggressive swing. It's just on good stance and good form. So just learning and being confident that when you lift your hammer up, when you drop it back down, it's gonna go right in the same place. And just lots of light taps can move the material just as effectively as hitting it as hard as you can and doing it fast. I could do batches if I chose to. I, I don't do that because uh, I do custom work only. So if somebody orders a knife, I make a knife. I don't really do batches because I don't have a website at the moment to sell stock. There's a website on the way, but it's very slow burning. I'm so bad with computers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's in Chelmsford. Her name's Jasmine. Uh, she's uh, on Instagram as to be Wonderlust Creative. She does all my photography. But her office is just around the corner from where I was working before. So it's very convenient to just drop a knife off there before I went into work, have a coffee, and then uh, she'd take it away, photograph it, and send the images back. She's fantastic at what she does. I really struggle to make my knives look as good as they do in person on a photo because I quite often I'd hold a knife in my hand and think, oh, this looks really good, and I take a picture of it and it just looks awful. Absolutely awful, especially the Damascus when it's mirror polished, because either the only way to show it's mirror polished in a photo for me was to have my reflection in the picture as I'm taking it, but then you couldn't see any of the other details in the handle. Mm -hmm. It's so hard. I mean, the, the, one, the one that I've done recently for the Burnt Chef project, where it's the Damascus Integral, every single facet on that is polished. So you've got curves and flats on the blades, uh, on the bolster you've got sharp angles as well as rounded parts. The handle's got sharp corners and also rounded edges and concaves. And I, I handed it to her and I said to her, I said, I will pre warn you this is going to be horrible to photograph because you're going to get glare in all the wrong places and uh, she said I wasn't wrong so it was very difficult to try and get the light set up. I'm going to switch over to uh, an A100 Tritec just to finish off the grind and also take it to a slightly nicer finish ready for hand sanding. So we've got a nice bevel, a good portion of the way out the side, and then flat on the back. So this will be a single beveled guto, which will give some ridiculously thin geometry on the grind. So food release should not be any issue with this whatsoever. Obviously from the forging, it's got a very nice distal taper, three millimeters or so at the top here, right down to less than one at the tip. Should be very nice. So I'm almost 100% sure you're going to tell me off now because I like to use Cubitrons for wood. Hi, it's Vince here. No, Jake, I'm not going to tell you off because despite the fact that Cubitron 2 was designed for grinding off steel, I have tested it for years on a variety of other surfaces, including hard and soft wood. That's right, Cubitron 2's self-fracturing grain actually works even better than aluminium oxide or zirconia on wood. There are a few different types of Cubitron 2 belts, but the best one for wood is still the 784F, which is available through GFS Knife Supplies. I can buy these belts and all of my other knife making needs directly from my phone 
phone and get them the following day. I've put all the links in the description below, so please check them out. Would you be interested in learning more about how to use your Cubitron 2 belt and how to make them last even longer? Let me know in the comment section below. Now back to the studio. So I, I've, especially with ironwood and the really dense woods, I found that the 36 grit Cubitron is probably the only thing that will actually cut it and stop it from overheating. Aluminium oxide really gums up very quickly, burns any dense woods like a lot. Yeah, so if you're still learning, I'll show you a really quick way. Yeah, so just using a square, just uh, this is a cheap one. I think I've got this from Lidl. Just hold it up to the light and find one side that's square. This is a very nice block from Honor, so it's all nice and square, just not the ends. So I'll find that square side. This one's probably the most square out of all of them. And then using the square itself against the work rest, I'll use that to square the end of the block so it's a perfect 90. It doesn't take a lot, very minimal pressure. And now this is nice and, nice and square at the top, which means that when I drill in the tang slot, I can use this as a reference, so it'll go nice and square the whole way down. Drill a nice straight hole. Just gonna take a piece of micarta, cut that with a hacksaw. Quite a horrible noise, isn't it? Super glue. Where did he put all that stuff? I just asked him to clear that bench, but I didn't see where he put any of it. Oh, did he just put it all over here? Where's he put the can? I've got a can of activator for my super glue. Oh, there it is. So before I stack these together, I'm just going to rough up the surfaces of the micarta because it's so shiny. It really scuffs up the surface nicely for a good bond. Knock off any excess dust. While we're drilling this, I just use uh, just some common everyday CA glue to hold the layers together. It's not overly strong, it's not the strongest adhesive in the world, but it's only a chef's knife. It shouldn't be used for anything too stressful. And the handle's gonna get filled with epoxy anyway before we glue everything finally. So I'll just put that on there, making sure it's all nice and centered. Use the activator. Just to hold it in place. And that'll keep it nice and snug whilst we're drilling and shaping and anything like that before the final glue up. Want to win this knife? Check out ukbladeshow.com or click the link in the description to find out more. If you want to know when the next video is out, like, subscribe and make sure you've clicked the bell notification. I appreciate your support.